Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and this video is number five, I mean number six in a series of lecture videos on complex numbers. Let's continue. Yesterday we talked about the Moivers formula which basically gives us the nth power of a complex number written in polar form, right? And we did some examples. As I remember, we raised one minus i to the fourth power but first we wrote it in polar form and then did that. Now we could continue with that and you could basically do this as an exercise and today we're going to talk about something else and that's going to be roots of complex numbers. So if z is a complex number written in polar form as z equals r times the quantity cosine theta plus i sine theta then we can find its nth roots and there is n of them right? A complex number has n nth roots, in other words, and we'll see some examples. This might look a little confusing to you, but don't worry about it. Basically, this means the nth root of z, but there are n of them, so this is kind of like a something that is multi-valued. That's why we have different k values. Now, obviously, if you replace k with n at the end, you're going to go back uh, to the first root, so we only go up to n minus 1 and that gives us n roots. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at an example and see how this works. I'll show you with an example, the best way to understand this. First of all, this is in polar form already, so we can go ahead and find its square roots. And this number has two square roots because it's the second power or two as an index. And they are, they are separated by the same distance. So if you think about it on the circle, they are equally distanced. In other words, they are 180 degrees apart. Does that make sense? So uh, you take 2 pi and divide by 2, so they're going to be pi radians apart. Let's see how this works. First of all, let's find the first square root of z. And you can call that anything, like w0, w1, whatever you want to use, or you can just say square root of z. Okay? Now, to find the first square root, I'm going to do the following. R is 1, so I don't have to worry about it. I'm going to cut this angle in half. That's going to be cosine pi over 4 plus i sine pi over 4. Now, why am I taking half of that? Because you're supposed to divide by n, which is 2 in this case, and I'm just dividing by 2. Make sense? So that's the first square root of 2, uh, first square root of z, I'm sorry. And like I said earlier, we could probably call this, um, let's say, call this W0, and let's call this W1. So basically, you're going to go from W0 to Wn minus 1, that's going to give you n roots. Make sense? So to find the second one, here's what you need to do. Remember, we said that they're going to be pi radians apart. So to find the next one, you're going to add pi to this angle, which is half of 2 pi, because you're finding square roots. And when you add pi to this, it's going to be 5 pi over 4. And of course, it's going to be the same again. And those are going to be the roots. If you know these values, you can replace them. For example, the first one is going to be root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2i. And you can do the second one. Make sense? Okay, I hope it does. Let's go ahead and take a look at another example. This one is not in, given in polar form, so I'm going to quickly uh, graph it. Negative uh, 4 is negative 4 plus 0i. So its argument is going to be pi radians. So I can basically write it, and its modulus, obviously, is going to be 4, because this is negative, uh, this is 4 units from 0. So z can be written as 4 times cosine pi plus i sine pi. And then, of course, I can go ahead and just find the first one. w0 is the first square root. I need to square root 4, which is 2, and then cut this angle in half. Half of pi is pi over 2, and I'm done. You see how easy that is with a formula? It looks pretty complicated, but when it comes to practicing these things, uh, fairly easy to do, I hope. If not, please let me know. Write down in the comment section so we can answer your questions. Now, to find the second one, obviously the modulus is not going to change. The angle, the argument is going to change because they're just going to be rotating. And uh, we have square roots, so 2 pi is going to be shared, and that's going to give us a pi increment. So you're going to add pi to this, and if you do, you're going to get cosine of 3 pi over 2 plus i sine of 
3 pi over 2. Now let me go ahead and find the uh, standard form for these because these are special angles. If you think about it, cosine pi over 2 is 0, right? This is going to be a 0. And cosine 3 pi over 2 is also 0. So W0 is going to give you, and sine pi over 2 is 1, and sine 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. So the first one is going to give you a 2, and the second one is going to give you a negative 2. And I think this should make sense, doesn't it? Because what happens is if you square these numbers, you should be getting, you should be getting negative 4 as an answer, right? Okay. So, oh, actually, oh, I'm sorry, not, those are not the answers. Sorry about that. Obviously, they're not the answers. We have to multiply them by i. So how do you multiply by i? 1 times i, 2 times 1 times i. So w0 is going to be 2i, and w1 is just going to be negative 2i. And of course, when you square negative 2, you're not going to get negative 4. But if you square 2i, you're going to get 4i squared, which is negative 4, and that kind of verifies what we found. Make sense? So those are the square roots. Let's go ahead and take a look at another one. This time we're finding the fifth roots. So how do you find the fifth roots? No worries, we're going to write this in polar form first. Think about 1 plus i. 1 plus i, I think we've done something similar before. It's going to be like 1 comma 1, right? And the modulus is going to be square root of 2, and the angle is going to be pi over 4. So r is root 2, and theta is pi over 4. And then you can go ahead and write this as root 2 times cosine pi over 4 plus i sine pi over 4. Yesterday, I think it was yesterday, we talked about Euler's formula. You could also write this in a more compact way, and square rooting, actually rooting is going to be a lot easier that way. Anyways, we can talk about that next or later. So this is z, and let's go ahead and find the fifth roots, and I'm going to name them w0 through w4. But to find w0, once you find w0, the rest is just going to follow. I do need to raise this to the fifth, uh, not fifth power, to the power 1 over 5, or uh, you can just write it as the fifth root. Same thing. And then, in this case, of course, that's a real number. And now you're going to divide the angle by 5, because you're finding the fifth roots. Be careful about that. And then uh, one-fifth of this is going to be pi over 20, and this is just going to be i sine pi over 20. To find the next one, let me show you how to find the second one, and then the rest will follow easily. Uh, the r value is not going to change. And then you have to add what to this angle, right? Now remember, the whole thing is 2 pi, and you're finding the fifth roots, so that's what you need to increment every time. So to find the next argument, you're going to basically add pi over 20 plus 2 pi over 5, which is 8 pi over 20. That's going to give you 9 pi over 20 plus i sine 9 pi over 20. Make sense? And then the rest will follow. You're just going to add, in other words, you're basically adding 8 pi over 20 every time without changing the modulus. Make sense? Okay, and this is this could be an exercise for you guys because I'm planning to stop at this and let me see what's coming up. Yes, the trigonometric functions are going to come up next time. And this could be an exercise for you. And this is the end of the sixth video. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and stay tuned for upcoming videos. See you in the next episode. Bye.